Good afternoon, everyone. What a beautiful day, huh? A little hot out there, though, but what are we going to do? Got to enjoy it while we got it, right? Okay, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, preparing ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we first call to mind our sins. You are the mighty God and the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh in the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks and great reward. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You're seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command, to desire what you promise, that amid uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments, and how unsearchable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew, glory, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the region of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say, John the Baptist. Others, Elijah. Still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father, and so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the nether world shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. I'm so excited about this. I had to show you this and hopefully it's going to work. We're doing this on the spur of the moment, but it's a cool thing. Hang on. 
Uh, it's tougher to do it in front of people. <laughs> okay, come on. Here we go. All right, here we go. Come on. All right. Okay, now I'm going to back up. Here we go. Okay, now. Why isn't it going someplace else? All right, that's good. That's what I want to show. I was trying to show you something else. Okay, well, here we go. Now, you know, Jesus lived in the Sea of Galilee, right? And uh, he was going to go to Caesarea Philippi today. Well, um, I always thought there's two Caesarea Philippi's. There was the one, there's one, no, there's a Caesarea by the uh, Mediterranean Sea, and that's where King Herod lived, okay? And that's a lot of action there. Well, this Caesarea Philippi is way, way more in, in the Mediterranean country, and uh, you go past the Sea of Galilee, you go, you follow the Jordan River, you go to another little lake, you go to the, you go to the east, and then you keep going up in the land called Dan. You've heard of the, the town called Dan, Dan? Well, there's where Caesarea Philippi is. And, and why would Jesus take them there, you wonder? And why, why would this be the big event where, you know, they ask who do you say that I am? And what does Peter say? Right? And, and well, first he's Simon. He's not Peter, he's Simon. And he says, uh, you know, they said all kinds of things, and but he blurted out, You're Simon, you're Peter, right? And the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against you. Well, where's the netherworld at, right? And where's the where's Hades and all that? Down below. Well, this picture, I'm going to turn it even bigger now. Okay, now, this is Caesarea Philippi. There was an ancient shrine there, um, not, not Jewish or anything, it's pagan. A couple, actually, the, the king, uh, whatever, the pagans there first did it, and then the Romans came and they built a shrine there. Because, well, look, you see that thing? That is a cave, a huge cave. And if you go down here, See all that water? They said this is the beginning of the River Jordan. Well, well, the River Jordan flows and then it goes to the Sea of Galilee, then goes into the River Jordan. But so the beginning, I guess, of the headwaters, which makes you think about what's going on there, the source of life and source of, of all that, and living waters and all of that. But this whole thing about but this they, they claim ancient writings from that time said that the source of the water came from that cave. And then flowed in and then went to the Jordan River. So as I'm talking, I'm thinking of all kinds of things, and maybe your mind is too. But what did he say to Peter? You are Peter, and on my rock, on this rock, the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against you. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I, I, I never heard of that before, but isn't that, I mean, there's a completely picture of it. Uh, and so, you know, we, Death and Hades is not going to prevail over, over Christ, over Peter, over the church, right? Isn't that pretty cool? Okay, I, I just thought I'd have to show you that. And I'm glad it worked. <laughs> okay, we'll turn that off now. Okay, so, and then, maybe you think more. I've been thinking a lot about, I'll go over here so you can see college kids are, are, are beginning and uh, you know there's a lot of worry about the virus and um, you know I kept thinking, what's it got to do with how can I connect it to the readings today well it finally dawned on me yeah, this whole new name Peter you know Simon I'm gonna give you a new name I'm gonna give you a new beginning right that's that's the, um, and you know and we all you know have our baptismal names we have got our confirmation names we got things where you know we Hopefully we take on a new identity for Christ. And of course, the purpose of all our life is to turn to Christ more. Uh, you know, that's it, to be renewed, to be start over again. So let's hope and pray with optimism about this. There's worries and fears, but our children are going to school. And uh, it's another, like every year, a new beginning. But you know, this is such a unique year, unique year. Let's uh, pray it's gonna be unique in Christ as well. That. Um, you know, it'll be something special, super special for the children, for the uh, 
youth and the teenagers and for the college people and uh, people like teachers too embarking on this there's all kinds of things with them <laughs> whether you're going to have a full all your students in your classroom or whether you know they're going to be online or whether half of them are going to be online and half of them are going to be in your classroom makes it a very interesting thing but let's insert our faith in this situation you know all things are good work for god as romans 8 says that we can put it in god's hands and um have a faith, hope, and trust in a new beginning. Lord our God, we pray you help us all at this time to continue to have hope and trust that you are in charge, to have hope and trust um, that you're taking care of our children. We know you do. You say, let the children come to me. You're taking care of our children. You're taking care of our youth. You're taking care of our college students. You're taking care of our teachers and school staff. And uh, may it just be a blessing here for them Amidst all the changes and differences, have faith that you are the Christ, the Son, the living God. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, where the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. Look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our response will be, Come, Holy Spirit, come. For Pope Francis, Bishop Persico, and all church leaders, that they may boldly profess Jesus as Lord, and help others to come to know him, we pray. Come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. For peace, that God may calm the storms of war and bloodshed, and bring the human family to calm and cooperation, we pray. Come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. For our nation, may God's will be done in the upcoming elections, we pray. Come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. For a deepening of faith, that we may rely upon God's wisdom and not be trapped by our own plans and visions, we pray. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. For our confirmation candidate, Luis Patricio, to be confirmed tomorrow, that the Holy Spirit will strengthen his faith in indescribable ways, that Jesus be by his side wherever he goes, we pray. Come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. For all who are beginning a new academic year, that elementary, 
high school and college students and teachers may learn together as they grow in wisdom and love. We pray. Amen. Holy Spirit, come. That God will protect our students and teachers and all school staff from harm and disease. We pray. Amen. Holy Spirit, come. For our community churches, especially Reverend Joe Short and members of the First United Methodist Church. We also pray for Father Felix and the members of San Antonio, our sister parish in the Yucatan, that the Spirit of God will renew them and guide them. We pray. Amen. Holy Spirit, come. For our beloved deceased, especially those who have died recently, and for James S. Hornung and Barbara McIsaac, who we remember in a special way at this liturgy, and for all who have died recently. May they experience the love and mercy of Jesus and rest in his heavenly peace. We pray. Amen. Holy Spirit, come. For any special intentions that you'd like to voice at this time. We pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Be with us and help us to increase our trust in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're very grateful for those, everybody that gives to the church. And uh, this is offertory time. And, we have our baskets here that you can place the offertory in. Um, if you're at home, still please remember, and thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, sending us through either dropping it off at the rectory or sending it in the mail or the uh, on online giving. Thank you so much. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you. The fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, become our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness of this wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine. The work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Bless us. Pray my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord, who gained yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once and for all. Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through whom Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. So with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall. They become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life the chalice of salvation giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ be brought together into one by the holy spirit remember your church lord spread throughout the world Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, Bishop Donald, all the clergy. Remember your servants whom you called from this world to yourself. Grant that we who are united with your Son also be in a death like his and go with him in the resurrection of the dead. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with all the blessed apostles and saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we'll always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. 
Look not upon our sins, but the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus be with all of you. Amen. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe you're most present in the holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, you're already here. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy. Graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, last week, we actually, at the 9 o'clock Mass, we had people downstairs with overflow, and we had to uh, rearrange. So some of the things we have to do is, if, if that decreases, if we get closer to again to Labor Day, when school starts and everything, you know, we, we pray that, uh, you know, more people might be coming, and we have to watch what we're doing here. Now, I'm looking over here especially, and I see it's empty on that side. So, and it's, everybody's in the center aisle. But if somebody else comes, you're going to have to move down because we're only supposed to use the center aisle. So, um, so try to think about that too. And same thing with the communion line. You're supposed to be in a little bit more, like three feet or so, where those blue marks are, so that again the social distancing is more like even at the communion line. So we have to think about that, especially if more people start coming and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, again, we continue to pray. We're grateful and happy for uh, the teachers and school and the first day of school and college students. We miss college students, but we keep moving on and we have a glorious new beginning. Um, next weekend, we're going to have the Missionary Cooperative Appeal. As you know, we usually have uh, in the summertime a missionary come and talk about them and, at, and raise funds. Um, um, we, because of COVID, of course, those were canceled. However, we, those uh, organizations still you know, rely heavily on the, the money that uh, they're given through that mission appeal. So next week we're going to have a little talk on missionary experience. I might talk about some of the places I've been and some of the things I've done or some of the missionaries I've run into. And then we'll, then we'll have a second collection and be mindful of, of course, our duties. As Pope Francis always says, we're all missionaries. So that's next week. There will be a second collection in for that cause. Thursday, we have pastoral council. And I guess, and we're also praying for the Presbyterian Church and for Pastor M. Burdick. Um, she's, um, we'll all be praying for her health. If we've known, if you have known, I don't know if you've known, but you know, she's been struggling, battling with cancer. And now we pray that God's close to her and with her um, and the Presbyterian Church. The Lord be with you. God's blessings upon you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.